Hello everyone, myself Rakhi, Assistant Professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, ABS Engineering College, Ghaziabad, affiliated to Dr. EPJ Abdul Kalam Technical University, Lucknow. Today, in the lecture series of Optical Communication, I am going to deliver before you Coherent Detection and after that, I will proceed Point to Point Links, Part 1. So, whenever we talk about the detection, what the common thing which comes in our mind? Detection terms itself tell something to detect. So, what we are going to detect here? Here at the receiver section in optical communication, we are going to detect the optical signal and then at last we are going to convert it into the electrical one and also we uh, it, it, there is a condition that what type of signal can be detected by a particular device at what amplitude it can be detected so there are various consideration while we are talking about the detection so one type of detection which we are going to study here is the coherent one and under this section of coherent detection, we have first homodyne detection and the second one is the heterodyne detection. Homodyne and the heterodyne detection are basically the parts of the coherent detection. After that, we will have a point to point links of the, of course, here we are talking about the optical communication. So, we will have the point to point link of the optical communication. After that, block diagram of the point to point links, system consideration that means, here we will talk about the various consideration which has to be taken into account whenever we talk about the point to point links and after that, we will move toward the design, design consideration. So, these are the some of the topics which we I am going to deliver before you in today's class. First of all comes the coherent detection. So, what is the basic meaning of the coherent detection? In optical fiber com communication, the term coherent refers to any technique which implies non-linear mixing between two optical waves. So, whenever someone asks you about the coherent detection, what the first thing which you have to tell that this is a technique which in involves non-linear mixing of two optical waves. So, here also we will have a two optical waves. So, in the block diagram we will see what are the two different type of optical waves which have been mixed in the coherent detection. Second thing as per this line only the term that is it will consist of some mixer where the mixing process will undergo. So, th this two thing we have to keep that it involves mixing of two different signals, non-linear mixing that means or again in the block diagram mixer is important. In this technique gain is provided to the incoming optical signal by combining or mixing it with locally generated continuous optical field. So, what the question which arises in the first line get answered by this second line. What are the two type of signal which is going to be mixed? The first is the incoming optical signal and the second one is the locally generated signal which is of course generated by some local generator which is part of our receiver section. So, this thing uh, the two waves which we are talking about is mixed in the coherent detection is now is answered. Now, what was the purpose of this coherent detection to provide gain to the incoming signal and the, the question which arises in the second line is now get answered by the third line. The device which is used for creating the continuous wave that is locally generated continuous wave we are talking about is a narrow line width laser called a local oscillator 
L O. Right, we have taken a laser here because we want to generate the optical signal and the laser is one of the source of the optical signal. And also we are known that it is a coherent source of optical signal. And now I am going to ask you that what is the importance of this narrow line width? Why we have taken a, taken a laser having a narrow line width? Because already we have discussed when we are discussing about the interference etcetera in the unit 2 where we have discussed about the various type of attenuation that signal, uh, the signal which is generated by either LED and a laser should be of narrow line width because it is directly proportional to the dispersion. So, as we increase the line width, our dispersion get increased and what are the consequences of the dispersion? Of course, the our signal get broadened and the ISI effect inter symbol interference comes into existence. So, if we want to reduce the dispersion, the first thing which uh, we can do that we can have take a narrow line width source of signal. So, this is the basic thing. Now, comes to the this block diagram. So, what is going to on here? This is a complete block diagram where we have a coherent detection system. So, first a optical source which is generating a signal of frequency omega 1 and now, the basic uh, principles which occurs at the transmitter section that is the modulation takes place. Modulation can be takes pl place by amplitude modulation, phase modulation, frequency modulation, ASK amplitude, PSK phase and the FSK frequency. And here we are talking, we are saying ASK, PSK and FSK because we are talking about the digital communication. In the previous lectures also when we are going to deal with the optical communication, we generally talk about the digital one. Then after the modulation, the signal gates transferred into the optical fiber. So, this is the optical fiber. Now, here comes the our receiver section and now what is happening? A local oscillator. So, what is the local oscillator? It is a land narrow line width laser again because it has to generate the optical signal. So, now local, uh, local oscillator is generating a signal of frequency omega 2 because in the first line all uh, we are taking uh, mixing between two optical waves, two different types of optical waves. So, incoming signal have a frequency of omega 1 and the local oscillator is generating a frequency of omega 2. And it is mixed and it will have IF and uh, is intermediate frequency. So, coherent detection is occurring here because we are having a local oscillator and we will generating a intermediate frequency and that then this intermediate frequency is inserted into the amplifier filter and de uh, demodulated next for the getting the data out in the at the end. So, this is basically simple section of the receiver. So, if anybody asks you and in question if it comes to draw the coherent detection receiver, simply you have to draw the transmitter section, you have to draw the optical fiber which is our transmitting media and then we comes to the receiver section. So, you will simply draw the blocks if you do not remember the complete diagram. So, incoming signal have the different frequency, the signal generated by the receiver, local oscillator in the receiver section should have a different frequency and at last we have to show one what intermediate frequency that is I f. So, this is the basic thing which you have to draw. Now, here comes the mathematical analysis of the coherent detection. So, whenever uh, something we have to detect, 
we have to of course analyze it mathematically also. So, here comes the mathematical analysis of the coherent detection. So, in this mathematical analysis what we are going to do first? We are taking one signal optical signal and its electric field which is given by this is the electric field of an optical signal which is given by A s cos omega s t plus phi s t. This gives the frequency and this gives the phase. This is a general expression of the our electrical field expression. Now, as shown in the this block diagram itself that after the signal get generated it has to be modulated. So, so the next process is to modulate. So, we will follow either of this principle as per our, our requirement for the modulation purpose and then this after modulation sig this signal has get transferred into the optical fiber. Now, now optical fiber transmission purpose is fulfilled now and the signal is received at the receiver section. So, we have to deal with the receiver section coherent detection. At the receiver the incoming signal is converted directly into the demodulated electrical output after getting interacted with the what? Photodiode. This directly detected current is proportional to the intensity of course, it will be proportional to the intensity of the optical signal and it is given by this one. So, E s and electric field and its conjugate. So, we have now this and when we take the response only because the response capability of the receiver we are going to ignore this one and we are getting half A s square and now this incoming signal has to be get interacted with what our locally generated signal. So, we have to consider now the electric field of the local oscillator. So, this will be the electric field of the expression for the electric field of the local oscillator. Now, at the coherent detection level, now the uh, uh, now the coherent detected output receiver is what? E co t, c o h this stand for coherent and this will be E s plus E, uh, e l o square. So, E s half A s square and this complete one is for the E l o that is our local oscillator. So, we have done so, we have taken a square of this and we have written now this. Now, in this case now since the optical power p t is proportional to what? Is proportional to the intensity of the photo detector. So, now the our optical power we will written by p s we have written actually this in the terms of a power now p s p l o and everything is expressed in the terms of power. Though, so, this is our the final expression of the power received after the coherent detection at the receiver section. Now, what is the difference between the homodyne detection and the heterodyne? Because heterodyne and homodyne are basically two parts of the coherent detection. So, when the signal carrier and the local oscillator frequencies are equal. So, in the initially what we are saying that this uh, omega 1 and omega 2 that is signal of the incoming signal frequency and the frequency generated by the local has oscillator is different when but in the case of a coherent detection it are this they are equal. So, coherent detection brings the signal directly to the baseband frequency so that no further electrical demodulation is required in the case of the homo everything has got some advantage and the disadvantage. So, it does not require further demodulation and it is the most sensitive coherent system and the system which is designed using the homodyne system is very sensitive one, but it is most difficult to build. And the, the reason behind this is that the local oscillator frequency and the incoming signal frequency has to be same. So, in this case when the omega i f that is frequency of the intermediate signal is 0 because omega i f is given by what? 
omega 1 minus omega 2 and in the case of homotine detection both of this are same. So, the resultant omega i f should be equal to 0. So, in this case omega i f is equal to 0 and when we take this expression of power now omega s minus omega l o this has to be 0 in the case of homodyne detection. So, after putting that equal to 0 we will have the power equal to p t is equal to p s plus p l o just try to do this whether you are getting this or not. Sus just substitute this expression with the what 0 1 and check whether you are getting this one or not. This is our task for you because you have to just substitute omega i f that is omega 1 minus omega 2 equal to 0. Now, we are moving towards the heterodyne one. Heterodyne of course, omega 1 and minus omega 2 should not be equal to 0 in the case of a homodyne detection. So, the block diagram or the power will be the same. There is a no change, but in this heterodyne is the intermediate frequency that was omega i f. Omega i f is what? Omega 1 minus omega 2 is non zero and an optical phase lock loop is not needed. So, when we are talking about the homodyne detection, we are saying that in the homodyne detection, we have the structure is complicated. Structure is complicated because it requires phase lock loop for its construction. But so, it, this structure get complicated for the heterodyne receiver of course, this is not required. So, that is why homodyne receivers are much easier to implement than homodyne receiver. And uh, of course, next thing 3 dB degradation sensitivity compared to homodyne sensitivity which is much more in the case of homodyne is not get reduced in the heterodyne case. So, now you are able to differentiate if someone asks you to have a differentiate between homodyne and heterodyne receiver detection you are able to get it from this. Now, comes the point to point links. So, whenever we talk about the point to point links which what is the point to point links? Point to point links basically involves all the related variables among the fiber uh, com optical fiber communication starting from the source to the detector and in, it involves all the operating characteristic which has to be considered. The design of an optical link involves many interrelated variables among the fiber source and the photodetector operating characteristics. So, that the actual link design analysis may require several iteration before they can be completed satisfactory. This point to point link are basically designed so that for final in the final case there will be no interruption or there is will be no any pro, any sort of problem. So, before actually implementing the system this has to be taken into account. The key system requirement needed to be analyzed optical fibers are desired transmission distance the distance uh, which has to be covered under the optical communication the data rate of or channel width and the bit error rate about that I think or you have already studied in the previous lectures of the optical communication. If you have any question regarding this you can all definitely refer to the previous lectures. Now, this is a block diagram of our point to point link. So, what is the first one information source which is going to give the information than an optical transmitter, LED or laser. So, these are the various points that should be considered. So, what are the point? Emission of wavelength, spectral line width because of course, it decides the word, dispersion and many more properties. Output power, emitting radiating area, emission pattern. I think about all this point you have already have a knowledge what role this parameters play in the optical communication 
So, if uh, it has been asked in the uh, long answer type questions, then you can have to explain each then uh, point. For example, what is the importance of a spectral line width? That is spectral line width has to be narrow because as we increase the spectral line width, dispersion get increased. Emission wavelength because emission wavelength because it has to be in the range of uh, optical and also some in some frequency the attenuation gate and the higher values and this has to be uh, uh, when you have to uh, discuss about the effective radiating area in that case you will talk about the our numerical aperture acceptance angle which gives the area up till which signal gate transmitted from the source. Now, the optical fiber multi mode fiber or single mode fiber you have already have a knowledge which is better for which conditions already we have discussed about this in the unit 2. So, and core size what is the significance of core size? What is the refractive index uh, significance of the refractive index dispersion attenuation numerical aperture you have to explain if it comes in the otherwise for the short answers this much is sufficient and uh, optical receiver responsivity, operating uh, wavelength, speed, sensitivity are the important parameter which has to be considered whenever we are going to have a point to point link. So, selecting the fiber is an important part, bit rate and distance are the major factors, other factors we consider are attenuation, distance bandwidth product of the connectors, splicing etcetera. Then we have to decide whether we are taking about the multi mode or single mode. Also, we will go through the greater index, step index, when we are have to have a single frequency, then of course, we will prefer single mode fiber, but when we will move towards the multiple frequency, we will go towards the multi mode fiber. So, this point has to be considered when and uh, in that also, we will have a greater index fiber, because in that case, dispersion is less as compared to multi mode step index fiber all this point are already discussed with you. So, here we are saying only this that whenever we have to discuss about the which has to be select which fiber has to be select and which has to be reject. So, we have to uh, deci decide it with the various parameters which is already known to us. Now, of course, optical source emission will depends upon the acceptable attenuation and dispersion spectral line width depends upon the acceptable dispersion, I already have a wide spectral the line width and laser have a narrow and this spectral line width is related to the dispersion, output power of the fiber LED low laser high, we have to also consider this point stability, reliability and cost driving circuit consideration, what is then because in the case of a laser the circuit uh, get more complicated than in the case of a LED and if we have for the small application for the smaller distance why should we go for the laser, we will of course, continue with the LED for a uh, nominal application for a short distance for experimental purpose. So, we have to decide the source based upon the conditions under which we are going to have a optical communication. Selecting the detector, what uh, type of detector APD and is avalanche photodiode, it has a high sensitive, but can complex high bias voltage and expensive pen simpler thermally stable low bias voltage and less expensive responsivity operating wavelength, speed, sensitive. So, at last I just want to conclude one thing that whenever we have to decide which thing has to be taken into account, which fiber, which detector, which source. First of all, we have to check which type of system we are going to designing. According to that only, we will decide take this. Before selecting the suitable component, the operating wavelength for the system is decided. This is the first thing which we are going to have. If the distance over which the data has to be transmitted is not too far, we may decide to operate in the. So, distance plays an important role as already I am going to 
I have told you. On the other hand, if the transmittance distance is long, 1300 or 1500 nanometer region is preferred due to lower attenuation and dispersion. So, before moving forward, the general thing which you have to be take into account whenever we are ab uh, deciding the something fiber, laser or anything or photodetector. So, we have to check for which system for which system which are we are have to design the link. How much distance for short distance, for long distance because as we increase the distance attenuation etcetera increases. So, if we are for the short distance communication, we can take something which gives the attenuation in the longer distance. So, this point has to be considered whenever we are about to design any point to point link. Now, the further thing is design consideration and also for designing purpose, uh, we used to have a link uh, do two type of analysis. First one is the link power budget and the second one is the system rise type budget analysis. What is the significance of this? determine the power margin between the optical transmitter output and the minimum receiver sensitivity needed to spe establish a specific bit error rate. So, in this particular case, case what we are going to do that whatever are the components which are going to des design the system is taken into consideration what type of losses is occurring and at end at the receiver section what we are getting. We will discuss uh, this in great detail in the with the help of numericals also in the next lectures. And the another thing other type of analysis which has taken into consideration while the design system is designed is the rise time budget analysis. Once the link power budget has been established, this designer can perform a system rise time. I think already all of you have known about the rise time. If you are not aware of the rise time, we will discuss of course, this in the next lecture to ensure that the desired overall system performance has been met. So, thank you for today. We will continue with the rise time analysis and the budget analysis in the next lecture. Thank you.